This is the review for the first semester final. For problem 1a, you need to reflect figure a, b, c, d, e over the x-axis. So I highlighted the x-axis, so that way you remember which axis you're reflecting over. So we have figure a, b, c, d, e, and we we're going to reflect it over the x-axis. So that means each vertice is going to be equidistant from the line of reflection. So here's the line of reflection. And I have A, one unit down, or negative one, from the x-axis. So A prime is going to be one unit above. B is one unit below. So B prime, one unit above. C is above the x-axis. So, um, two units, so C prime, two units below. D, three units above. D prime, three units below. E, one unit above. E prime, one unit below. So now we need to determine what is the, what are the coordinates for um, A prime. So A prime is a coordinate of 2 comma 1. 2 on the x, 1 on the y. We need to reflect figure a, b, c, d, e across x equals negative 1. And the way I determined how to find x equals negative 1 is you start at the origin and on the x-axis you go to negative 1. Put a little hash mark there and you can see that that hash mark is making a vertical line, and that's the line for x equals 1. Every x value on this line has a value of negative 1. For example, negative 1 on the x, negative 3 on the y. That's negative 1, 3. Negative 1 on the x, 3 on the y. So all of these values equal negative 1. So this is our line of reflection. So if we have a from the line of reflection is negative 2, a prime is going to be, well, negative 2 units to the left, it would be positive 2 units to the right, a prime. b from line of reflection, 1 unit to the left. From the line of reflection, b prime, 1 unit to the right. c is on the line of reflection, so we have c and c prime share that vertice. D, three units to the left. D prime, three units to the right. It's very important that you highlight this, especially when you first start, and so you don't mix it up with the y-axis. It's very easy if you um, don't have it highlighted to mix it up with the y-axis, but now that I have it highlighted, I know I always start on that highlighted line. What are the coordinates for A prime? A prime, start at the origin, don't start at the line of reflection, at the origin, 0, 0, 1 on the x, negative 3 on the y. For problem 1c, we need to reflect figure a, b, c, d, e over the y-axis. So now I'm highlighting the y-axis to remind myself that all of these vertices are going to be reflected or flipped over to the other side, equidistant from the line of reflection. So A is two units to the right. A primes, it'll be negative two units to the left. From the line of reflection, B is one, two, three, four units to the right. So B prime, one, two, three, four units to the left. C four units to the right, C prime, four units to the left. D, three units to the right from the line of reflection, D prime, three units to the left. E, one unit to the right, E prime, one unit to the left. So now we need to determine what are the coordinates for A prime. So the coordinates for A prime are negative 2 on the x, you start at the origin, negative 1, negative 2, so negative 2 on the x, comma, and then on the y, 
we're going down on the y-axis, so negative 1 on the y, so negative 1. So the coordinates for a prime, negative 2, comma, negative 1. I need to simplify the expression. And I have 3x cubed multiplied by 4x to the fifth. So I have, um, I'm going to go ahead and combine and multiply like terms. And I have 3 multiplied by 4, the coefficients. 3 multiplied by 4 is 12. And then I have x to the third multiplied by x to the fifth. Well, if you remember the rule for multiplying exponents with the same base, if they have the same base, x and x, you're going to add the exponents because I have, I'm multiplying 3x's here and I'm multiplying 5x's here. If I add those all together, I get 8x's. So I get 12x um, to the 8th power. I have 4y third to the second power. And when you have a power raised to a power, the rule is you multiply. And the way I always remind myself is, well, if this exponent smashed up against parentheses, that's reminding me to multiply. So power raised to a power, that means I have two groups of y to the third. Well, if I have three y's multiplied by three more y's, I total, I have six, so that's y to the six. Three multiplied by two is six. And then I used a placeholder here for four to the first power. Anything to the first power is itself. Um, so two multiplied by one is two. And then to simplify four squared, four times four is 16. So we get 16 y to the sixth. For c, we're dividing integer exponents. So here we have 9x to the 7th multiplied by 4y squared divided by 3x to the 5th multiplied by 4y to the 4th. Well, first I can divide. 9 divided by 3 is 3. And then if you remember the rule for dividing um, exponents with the same base, if they have the same base, you just subtract them. If I was multiplying 7x's here and 5x's here, I have more x's in the numerator. How many more? I have 2. And so basically what you're doing is you're subtracting 7 minus 5 equals 2. Here, 4 divided by 4 is 1. And anything multiplied by 1 is the, um, itself, the identity property multiplication. So we can go ahead and eliminate that 1. And then we have y squared divided by y to the fourth. Well, I have more y's in the denominator than the, denu the, than the numerator. And how many more do I have? I have two more in the denominator. So I know the y's are going to be in the denominator, y squared. 2 minus 4 equals negative 2. We can't have a negative exponent. Um, so um, y to the negative second, we bring that down to the denominator, which is y to the second power. But the easiest way to remember is if you have more, um, uh, more y's in the denominator, you know it's going to end up in the denominator. Another way of doing it showing this would be if I had y squared over y to the fourth power, I can, there's y squared, y multiplied by y, and then y to the fourth is y multiplied by y four times. Here's um, a giant one, y divided by y is one, y divided by y is one, and then um, that leaves me with y squared in the denominator. And I could multiply this by 1. So I have a value up in the denominator. So here's... What is the slope for any equation of a line that's parallel to the line y equals 3 fourths x plus 5? Well, here's the line y equals 3, x, 3 fourths x plus 4 has a slope of 3 over 4, rise of 3 over 4. 
Well, any um, line that's parallel will have the same slope because they'll have the same rate of change. So I can create a line that's parallel to this. I'll give it the y-intercept of positive 1, and it has the same rate of change, rise 3, 1, 2, 3, run 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. Or negative 3, 1, 2, 3, negative 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. And you can see that these two lines are parallel to one another because they have the same rate of change. Rise 3, run 4. So if they have the same rate of change, the same slope, they are parallel to each other. 4b, what is the slope of any equation of a line that is perpendicular to line y equals negative 2 thirds x plus 11? So perpendicular, think of um, the letter t. Those two lines are perpendicular to one another. They create a 90 degree angle. So if we have, here's the line, um, y equals negative 2 thirds plus, um, plus 11. 11 is the y-intercept, and it has a slope or rate of change of negative 2 thirds. Rise 2, run negative 3, or negative 2, positive 3. So we want to create a line that's perpendicular, that creates a T. And it could be any line along here that's going to create that right angle. So it doesn't matter where, um, which um, line I create. Um, so I want to create um, a line that's going to make that T. Well, in order to do that, if you have a slope of m equals negative 2 thirds, a line that's um, perpendicular to that is going to be its negative reciprocal. So if the sign is negative, this, um, the line that's perpendicular to it is going to be a positive. And then you take the reciprocal of 2 thirds. The reciprocal of 2 thirds is 3 halves. So we have a slope So we have a slope of positive 3 halves. And what would that look like? So if I chose any point here, and I'll choose this point right here, that has a slope of 3 over 2, rise 3, run 2, or negative 3, negative 2. And you can see when I... connect those points, I get a line that's perpendicular. It creates these 90, degrees, 90 degree angles. So what you need to make sure that you remember is a line that's perpendicular, the slopes have negative reciprocals. So if the slope is a positive, it will be the, it'll be a negative. And then you take the reciprocal, 3 halves, 2 thirds, or vice versa. If it's negative, it'll be positive. The reciprocal of 2 thirds is 3 halves. For the graph, you need to write the equation of the line in slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b. So to, in order to write it in slope-intercept form, y equals, y equals mx plus b, the m represents the rate of change or the slope of the line. So I can take any of the points, the lattice points, that's where um, these two lines intersect on the graph, and they intersect here, they intersect here, and I can take any two points and do the rise over run. This rises two and runs negative one. Well, that's two over negative one. Two over negative one simplifies to negative two. I also could do negative 2 and positive 1.
negative 2 divided by positive 1 is still negative 2. I could also do, and again, any two lattice points, rise 2, I mean rise 4, run negative 2. Well, 4 divided by negative 2 is still negative 2. So it's any two lattice points. To get the B, or the y-intercept, the y-intercept is where your line intersects with the y-axis. So I always highlight the y-axis. You can um, easily see where these two intersect. And it intersects at negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, at negative 5. So we have the y-intercept is negative 5. So the equation for this line is y equals negative 2x minus 5. For B, using the given table, write the slope, y-intercept, and the equation. In order to find the slope or rate of change, you look at the di uh, difference between the y's over the x's. So difference of the y's, you can see that from 8 minus 2 is 6. 2 minus 0 is 2. Or you can say 0 plus 2 is 2. 2 plus 2 is 4. 2 plus 6 is 8. 8 plus 6 is 14. So the difference between the y's over the x's is 6 over 2. 6 divided by 2 simplifies to 3. So the slope of this graph, I mean of this table, equals 3. Now for the y-intercept, the y-intercept is when x equals 1. If you think of a graph, um, the line is going through the y-intercept when x is 0. So you just look for where x equals 0. X, um, when x is 0, y is 2. So the y-intercept for this table is 2. Now we have everything to write this equation in slope-intercept form. y equals mx plus b. The m equals, or, um, equals 3, or the slope, rate of change. The b, the y-intercept, is 2. So y equals 3x plus 2. Write the equation of the line in slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b, when the slope equals 3 and passes through po the point 2, comma, negative 5. So we want to put it in slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b. What was given to us is the slope, 3. Now we need to find out, well, what is the b equal? What is the, um, the y-intercept? In order to do that, we can um, take the given points, the x and y, and plug it into this equation. If we know x is 2, we can plug it in x is 2. And we know y is negative 5, we um, substitute y with negative 5. Now we can solve for b. That's the only um, variable or unknown we have. So now we simplify this equation and solve for b. 3 times 2 is 6. Still don't have b by itself. Inverse property of addition is subtraction, so we're going to subtract 6 from both sides. Created a zero pair. Negative 5 and negative 6 equals negative 11. So we have b equals negative 11. So now we have everything to write this in slope-intercept form. The slope was given to us, the m, and the b, the y-intercept, we just solved, which equals negative 11. Write the equation of the line in slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b, that passes through the points 10, 6 and 8, 2. So we need to be able to find the slope and the b, the y-intercept. So in order to do that, if you have two given points to find the slope, you use the um, slope formula, difference of the y's over difference of the x's. So I'm going to subtract y2 minus y1. So I'm going to identify this as y2, this y1. I could do this y2 and this y1, but I'm going to um, um, put this as y2. So I have 2 minus 6, y2 minus y1, divided by x2 minus x1, so x2, 8, 
Here's 8 minus 10. 2 minus 6 is negative 4. I have more negatives than positives, so I know it's a min negative. And 8 minus 10, more negatives than positives. Signs are opposite. You subtract. 10 minus 8 is 2, so it's negative 2. A negative divided by a negative is going to be a positive. So negative 4 divided by negative 2 is positive 2. So now we have um, the slope, m equals 2, or the slope equals 2. So we have this. Now we need to go ahead and find the b, or the y-intercept. Well, we did that in the previous problem when we were given the slope. So we were given the slope. We found that, which is 2. Now we need to find the b value. And in order to do that, I need to know the values for y and x. Well, I have two points that have the x and y values, so I can choose either of these two points to substitute into this equation. And I'm going to go ahead and choose um, 8 and 2. I could have chosen 10 and 6, but I chose this, um, this coordinate, so 8 and 2. So x equals 8 and y equals 2. So now I'm going to go ahead and solve for the b, the y-intercept. 2 multiplied by 8 is 16. Inverse property of addition is subtraction, so I'm going to subtract 16 from both sides. That creates a zero pair. 2 minus 16. I have more negatives than positives, so I know it's going to be a negative. And when the signs are opposite, you subtract, so 16 minus 2 is 14, so it's going to be negative 14, and I get b equals negative 14. So now I have the slope, I have the slope, and I have the y-intercept, and I can go ahead and put that in slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b, the m is 2, the b, the y-intercept is negative 14, so y equals 2x minus 14. Give the function f of x equals 8 minus 3x. What is the input if f of x equals 12? Well, remember, input's the x value, output's the y value. So we're trying to find the x value. We know what f of x equals. f of x equals 12. So if f of x equals 12, we're going to substitute it, f of x with 12. Now we need to solve for the input or the x value. And so we have 8, inverse property of addition and subtraction. So we're going to subtract 8 from both sides, 0 pair. 12 minus 8 is 4. And then now we have um, negative 3x. Inverse property of multiplication, this is multiplication, is division. So we're going to divide both sides by negative 3. This creates a giant 1. 1 multiplied by x is x. And then 4 divided by negative 3 is negative 4 thirds. So x equals negative 4 Solve thirds. for each equation. So here we're, we need to distribute this 3 to the quantity of 2x plus 5. And when you distribute, you have to distribute to each term inside the parentheses. So we have 3 multiplied by 2x, which is 6x. 3 multiplied by a positive 5 is positive 15. Now, our, um, our goal is to get x by itself, so we have positive 15. We're going to subtract 15 from both sides. What you do to one side, you do to the other. 0 pair. And now we have 3 minus 15. We have more negatives than positives, so we know it's going to be a negative. When the signs are opposite, you subtract 15 minus 3 is 12, so we get negative 12. 6x, this is multiplication. Inverse property of multiplication is division, so we're going to divide both sides by 6. We're dividing by 6 because this creates the giant 1. 1 multiplied by x is x. What you do to one side, you do to the other. And we have a negative divided by a positive. Negative divided by a positive is going to be a negative. So negative 12 divided by 6 equals negative 2. So x equals negative 2. B. 
we're going to solve this equation and first we can simplify this equation by combining like terms we have like terms here so we have 4a minus a gives us 3a and um, positive 1 we're going to subtract 1 from both sides it gives us a zero pair here 19 minus 1 is going to give us 18 and now we have 3a um, inverse property multiplications division we're going to divide by 3 that gives us the giant one what you do to one side you do to the other 18 divided by 3 is 6 a equals 6. For problem nine, we need to determine what is the domain and range for this graph. The domain are all the x values. So if we look here, I put a line where x equals two. So our um, domain is gonna start at x equals two, it includes two. So our x, um, our x values are greater than or equal to two. And as we go to the right, it's, it's in, the x values are increasing. And since we have an arrow there, that means that it's gonna go in, um, infinitely in this direction towards the positive x's. So our um, domain, x is greater than or equal to two, but less than or equal to infinity. And it's, um, it's gonna go infinitely towards the positive x values. For our range, our range are the y values. So now I put a um, line y equals five because this is where it, the y values on the y-axis stop. Since it's a closed circle, it includes um, the um, y equals five. So it includes that it's equal to it. Um, so our y values are going to be less than or equal to five because you can see that the line or graph stops here. It's not greater than five, but it's less than or equal to five. So that's why we have y is less than or equal to five, but it's going to be greater or equal to negative infinity. And why, the reason why it's negative infinity is because as we go down on the y-axis, it's going down and this arrow is telling us it's gonna go infinitely, keep going in a downward direction. So y is going to be greater than or equal to negative infinity. So on the y-axis as we go down negatively, it's gonna go forever in that direction.